you just gotta do your best to do all that stuff and hopefully enough time passes where all the BS just becomes something people, oh, remember that thing or no, not really. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. So, Doc, thank you so much for your time today. So, huh, of all places, Syracuse has the prettiest theater. Who would have thought? <laughs> well, I, every day, now we're in Rhode Island, and this theater is gorgeous too. So, it's a. Uh... It's actually, it's a so, it's such a new experience. I mean, these venues they're playing, it's like where, you know, they'll have like Christmas shows and and <laughs> musicals. And I, I feel completely uh, unworthy, like we're crashing some fancy, uh, fancy people's party. I feel like I'm out of outclassed over here, but, uh, but still enjoying it. Uh, of the people that are lucky enough to see this see this run here of North American uh, shows, I mean, obviously you got the new album out. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But what should we expect from this show right now? Um, I mean, everything feels really fresh right now. You know, um, we have new albums. So we're playing a lot of songs from that. Yeah, yeah. We're busting out some songs we've never either never played live or songs we've never played in the way we're doing them on this tour. Uh, we have a brand new guitar player, uh, AJ Rivolo from uh, the band Issues. Hmm. Um, I've been away from the band all year. I've been playing with Ice Eye Kill, so even me coming back to the band feels kind of fresh. Um, so it's you know, it's it, it just feels like a fresh start. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And you know, and you know, we were supposed to go out with Asking Alexandria and the Who earlier this year or a few months ago, and. You know, a lot of exigent uh, circumstances happen. We we had to pull out of the tour, which you know we hate. It's terrible for the band. It's terrible for the fans. It's um, you know, um, but the kind of upside to that was we were able to really prepare for this tour and make sure mm -hmm. everything was functioning. We had a couple warm up shows uh, leading up to the Bush dates, and that helped us kind of get our bearings and kind of figure things out. Um, and so yeah, so I I would expect a band kind of with like reinvigorated energy and and, and a, an approach and um you know it's like i feel like every time you put out a new album you feel like you're you always feel like you're starting over you know yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. you know because because you know it's like oh they like the last album well they like this album we don't know <laughs> it, 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 it remains to be seen and you know kind of speaking about like the theaters we're doing you know it's all seats most of these shows we've never done a tour where it's like that every day so yeah it's a different kind of connection to the crowd you have to kind of connect with them oh, we're playing a lot everyone's sitting down you have to kind of rouse them out of their seat if you, yeah, if, yeah. If you can um so it has its challenges but it's also like uh it's just something different and and i like that you know just gotta mix it up try different things You know, I don't expect that there's anybody watching this video on YouTube that doesn't know roughly the roller coaster that Bad Wolves has gone through in the last few years, right? So, um, uh, is this one really, this new album, this tour, and all the stuff that's going to come our way from shows and festivals in 2024, is this really like the start of, of, of that second chapter? Because I remember a lot of people, like previous album, where right in the middle of all the... All, all the all the the hectic stuff i remember a lot of people going like oh i'm a little cautious to see what's going on like will i like it will i not like it and i've seen and you might tell me later that oh i don't read comments or whatever but i know every artist does read comments to <laughs> some extent i've seen a lot of comments on the new material of people exactly that like hey last time around i wasn't too sure but i'm really liking this uh there seems to be very positive reaction on new material that freshness um is it the right way of looking at it do you think in five years you'll look back and go like okay 2023 2024 this was like part two of our our history i mean really there's probably five or six parts if you want to be <laughs> honest there's so many i'm serious there's yeah. there's so many different chapters and kind of forks in the road and how things ended up um you know, I, I think you don't have that uh, trying to 
understand how things are going to look five years from now, I think it's impossible. Right. So it's, it doesn't really serve you at all. Uh, you can only really live in the moment. Um, listen, the last album, if I was to recount all the negativity and all the bad blood and all the horrible things that were put out there, inaccurate, horrible things. Right. Um, our set of circumstances around just navigating in a band, which shouldn't be that hard. It's just rock and roll, you know? Right. Um, it shouldn't be that hard, um, has been that hard. And, you know, so I think there's just, we're a band with a lot of baggage, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm probably, you know, there's, it, the truth is probably 50%, 60% of the fans or people, they, they don't know anything about any of that. They just, they buy the record and that's it. That's their, right. their kind of, uh, they listen to music or they go to a show and their relationship with what's going on with the band kind of ends there. So it's a very kind of particular kind of person that's connected to that story and all the all the all, yeah, all the yeah. BS, and it's tough for us because we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Of course, if we don't talk about it, we're being boring and we're being avoidant and we're not yeah. acknowledging the reality. If we do talk about it, then we're dwelling in the past and we're drumming up uh, drama. There's you know there's kind of there's no real win for us. Yeah, uh, but I think and I truly believe this is just like. If what you do, if you like, if you put out an undeniable piece of work and your live show is undeniable and you have, and in all the levels of quality and you're doing your stuff with social media and you're connecting with fans and you're creating good merchandise and making good, if you do all the stuff right, eventually people got to come back to like what's working, you know, cause, but if it's, but if it's not working, then all that other stuff is going to matter, you know? So, um, and I can't, you know, and I think, I don't know if every, you know, the last few years, if every one of those things has been working. So it's like, you just got to do your best to do all that stuff. And hopefully enough time passes where all the BS just becomes something people, oh, remember that thing? No, not really. But, yeah, yeah. you know, but it hasn't been that long. I mean, we put out four albums in five years. Yeah. So five years in a band, you know, some bands, big bands, they go five years between one album. Oh, for sure, you know? for sure, for sure. I mean, you guys have, so, have sort of crammed a whole career of the average band into a few years, which which is crazy. Yeah. And that includes a couple of years that the whole world was shut down. Like, that. that's just completely insane. The legends never die. The legends never die. Now we have just have as much material with DL as we do with exactly. previous we've done that work and so that body of work exists and people can judge it for how they want to judge it and no one's opinion is right or wrong you know like no one is entitled we're not entitled for people to like our music you know i hope you're living that high life chilling on the other side i bet you haven't changed this new album there's many ways that we can interpret titles and lyrics and what have you um but forget about the band's roller coaster there's a very personal, relatable way of interacting with your music. Do you see yeah. that people, not just on their comments, but also as people come to signing sessions for vinyl or VIP meet and greets and all that kind of good stuff, do you get more and more of that? That you get people that go like, hey, this song means this to me, no matter what kind of feelings you guys as writers were channeling, but that it speaks to people in a different way? Uh, I mean, it's hard to quantify different, to be honest. Um, the album's so new, also. Like, in a weird way, we're still, like... I feel like the album's actually kind of underexposed right now. Um, okay. And it's going to be a process of a year or so going out and kind of, like, showing the record to the world. Right. Um, but, you know, it's... Listen, that is a consistent thing where you get those messages. Hey, this... The song saved my life. This I connected this so much as, you know, we've always kind of been that kind of a band, and you know, not you know, uh, not because of me or anything I've done. Uh, I'm not like a primary lyricist uh, for the band, um, but we've always tried to tap into those things that uh, mm -hmm. whatever people are dealing with and trauma and love and loss, um, all the, all that stuff, and you know, and, and then this record it's probably more personal in terms of the stuff we've gone through collectively and kind of, you know, I don't know if people can relate to that, but sometimes you yeah, just have yeah, to tell yeah. your, your story. 
um, and, and make it as personal as possible. But yeah, man, that's something, you know, we've kind of dealt with a lot. It's almost to like a scary degree sometimes where yeah. people connect through their trauma or depression or anxiety and you feel like I'm not prepared. Like I'm not right. equipped to kind of like yeah. uh, give people uh, You're not you a know, licensed uh, professional advice. To, yeah. yeah, like you know, and um, I think that kind of speaks to how people utilize music as this coping mechanism and how they connect with like the artists that they admire um and that's a big responsibility you know um <laughs> you know which is, it can be it can be really intimidating you kind of kind of do your do your best and try and be there for people as much as possible but yeah that's something that's been pretty consistent with with the band i think Call it what you want now baby does it matter um, we know that you're on the road right now for these North American dates, but what should we already keep our eyes open for for 2024? Because I have a feeling you're going to be very busy. We're, I mean, we're discussing it right now. Um, there's you know stuff we're in the works for. There's some kind of tours we're trying to put together with other bands and stuff, and that, none of it's done. Uh, so I definitely would be you know out of turn to kind of speak too sure. too soon about it. But you know the band is going to be working. We're going to be out there. Oh yeah. Um, And I'm gonna, you know, make a, a point of it, you know, tell these guys, let's, let's, we, we have to hit the ground running. And if everyone wants what they want out of the situation, it's, it's going to take a lot of work, you know, yeah. it's, and it's, you know, this, I think with a band like us, right, we, you know, we, this zombie thing was a phenomenon and it's very difficult to kind of organize a normal band experience around something like that because you're right. always going to be compared to that. Yeah. But that thing is not, you can't manufacture that, right? No. You can't go, Oh, well that happened. So let's do that. Um, cause at the end of the day, it's not, yes, that happens every now and again, in the music industry where you have this one thing that kind of takes off, uh, but it's a blessing and a curse. And what really works in the long run is small consistencies, you know, mm -hmm. quality and consistency over time. So it's like, well, let's have a good show today. Let's yeah. make good things today. And then so you do that a hundred times in a row, then all of a sudden, then success starts manifesting itself. But just waiting for that one explosive thing, you can't really right. control that. No, you know? exactly. So and and, and, and if that stuff happens, great. You, of course you want that to happen. Um, but for us, it's like looking down the long road and go, let's go out and let's bust our ass. Let's connect to people. Let's show them this music. Let's get better as a live band. Let's get that. You know, that's you know, th those are the things. I'm old school. That's how I I start came up doing it. Was going out, you know, day to day, meeting people, you know, and making that connection real. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, you're right. Like these things can be planned for. Uh, it's hard to get around now, and and you you call already a blessing and a curse. I mean. Great, you've got more than half a billion views on that video on YouTube. But to your point, in 20 years from now, you don't want to be remembered as that band that covered a song once, right? You want to... Yeah, but not only that, half a billion people ain't listening to the new album. So right. it's exactly. great that it happens, but the song is more popular than the band. Exactly. So if it's, if, it's, if it's this thing that exists over there, but it's not actually attracting people to your day-to-day -day business, then listen, it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just not... It's not the help that people yeah, yeah. think. It's just it gives you that recognizability when we, you know, we do a tour like this with a band like Bush, this legacy band that has been big for decades. When we play that, those people might not know one song, but they're gonna know that. And exactly. so it gives you that kind of window, uh, an into anchor a certain connection. Also. Yeah, but it's still like it's almost so well known that it's and it's a cover song, so it's you have a distance from it. Is that also like one of the many ways that we can interpret the cover art of a new album? Because we see a seemingly both gold yet poisoned apple being being offered to us. Um, one of the one of the many gold yet poisoned apples <laughs> that you've had to deal with uh, so far. I had nothing to do with making the album work, so I'm <laughs> actually I think DL's wife or singer did it and she's in the other room, so we have to go in there and ask her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, awesome. Hey, to yes, wrap up I'll just oh. say yes. Whatever you there think, we go. that's right. 
there you go whatever out oh, there that's easy that, no, that's scary uh nobody here by the way is watching this video for my opinion um which is a good thing um hey to wrap us up uh one of the what i really uh what i like about the new album is um uh i think there's one particular song that really wraps up what you guys are all about really and that is um the the, the cool closing song you know like was it set you on fire Run through you know I can. It starts off very intimate, but it has some, some some surprisingly hard parts that you almost don't notice because there's such a layer of, of, of catchiness and, and accessibility going at the same time. But it just kind of as one song is so representative of the band. Now, I don't know if this song is, is you know, made it itself into the playlist, but uh, um uh, it, it, do you agree with that? Is there a reason why this song finishes up the album? So there was actually a big back and forth. So like I was on tour with Ice Nine Kills and we we're going back and forth about the order and the guy sent something and then I actually sent an order and the guys were like, that's great, perfect, we'll use that. And I was like, oh, I was surprised. But then at the last minute, it was uh, Hungry for Life was supposed to close the record. Okay. And Set Your Fire was supposed to be the fourth song on the album. And then they switched it uh, because I think they wanted Hunger for Life to be a single right. at some point. So they moved it up. Uh, and I was disappointed about that because I, I, I really like Hunger for, Hunger for Life, but I, li I like Set Your Fire better. Um, uh, yeah, it's in many ways, I think it's a, that song really encapsulates the album really well. Yeah. Because I think we went into the album thinking like oh we're gonna be edgier we're gonna push we're gonna like you know fuck the radio and fuck, you know <laughs> forget all that stuff and right but then you go and you you start making music and whatever comes out comes out right. right you can't like you can go and say you're gonna make this kind of album but what's gonna happen is what's gonna happen and i think in a weird way like all these pop influences were there and kind of modern production influences but then a song like that, like the chorus could be like a kill switch engage song. Right. Yeah, and, exactly. And the and the bridge could be like on a Death Tones record or like a sleep token album or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and it so it it's all in one thing, but none of it contradicts itself. You know? Yeah. Um <clears throat> so it kind of just and that's all like the that bridge, that's my favorite part of the album. That's okay. my favorite thing. It's awesome. just so heavy and it's so big and it like Goosebumps, it makes me emotional. You know, it's just really, it's a really cool moment. It's funny, I remember when we first were working on a song, I didn't like it. I was like, this is like, interesting. I mean, it sounds like some J Justin Bieber thing. What is it? I was, you know, I, I don't, and then slowly, I'm like, as a, the song just developed and developed, it got better and cooler. And I was like, man, this is like, this is really cool. So, you know, so ultimately, I'm I'm totally fine with it closing the record, because, um, like I said, I think it does kind of combine yeah, all yeah, those yeah. elements of what is on this record, which is a lot of stuff, and it's a band kind of unafraid to be itself, yeah, whatever yeah. that is. You know, there and, you and we keep on. We're the closest to it, so we have the least perspective on what the record is. Like course, you could ask a band what the record is, we don't we don't know. Like everyone else decides. I'm I'm serious. Like, yeah. You know, I like what, like what encapsulates it. It's it's very tough to put into words, you know. And and I'm not the primary songwriter. I contribute, you know. I, yeah. I'll contribute to do song here and there. I'll write a guitar solo. I'll help out with some things here and there. So it's not my distinct vision. So I'm mm -hmm. as much a witness to it as I am a participant. You know. Doc, I promised I would keep us on time. Sorry, we're going two minutes over here, but uh, oh, I do sorry. appreciate it. Absolutely. Wish you guys the best with this rest of this tour. And I can't wait to see all those announcements when you guys are ready for 2024. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It means a lot. watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel